Hello, I'm DJ Oliver and welcome to Detroit Performs. I'm at the Detroit Mercantile Company located in Detroit's historic Eastern Market. In today's episode, we're featuring artists who are bringing back some ancient forms to create some of their work, as well as looking into the past, present, and future of our city. Our first segment features painter Hubert Massey, whose murals are sprinkled all throughout Motown. He is also one of only a few in the country who professionally creates frescoes, a form of painting once done by cavemen and epitomized by Michelangelo. Let's take a look. Being able to create something from nothing and uh, being able to have something to outlast me uh, has been my, my strong passion. I grew up uh, in uh, Flint, Michigan, moved to Mount Morris, Michigan, and went to Flint Beecher High School. I've been drawing since I was about six years old. I don't know, it was really fascinating for me just to, just to draw pictures when I was real young. But uh, until I got into college and I went away to, uh, to Europe and I got to see a lot of the master painters, just really uh, fueled my energy to wanting to be an artist. I love history. When I was in Europe, I seen the, the cartoon drawings of Leonardo da Vinci. I seen the, some of the pieces of uh, Peter Paul Rubin. They were monumental, like 20 feet by 15 feet or so. It was just a you know, true inspiration for me. I got hired two years before I got out of college to come here to the city of Detroit to work for uh, a sign company. Uh, the sign company were billboards that were 14 by 48. Some billboards were 20 feet by 72 feet or so. And all billboards were all hand painted up until about the early 90s or so. So I came in a time when uh, most of the sign painters were hand painting billboards 40 to 50 hours a week. So every day, painting billboards and oil paints and uh, mixing colors just really honed in my uh, skill quite a bit. You talk about artists in the Renaissance period, they didn't have the media coverage that we have now. So it was, it was uh, the, the artwork was done in public places. So people communicated to one another and talked about, well, you need to see this artwork that's done by this artist, Michelangelo, and the word travel. So the same thing for public art. When you do a piece of public art and, and it's done well, and it's done with the quality of materials, it can last for hundreds of years, and it can last for thousands of years. And uh, just the mere fact that uh, being able to create a piece of artwork that has a major impact upon communities and, um, and has a major impact upon environment, it's just it really intrigued me. How I became more of a fine artist is, I just saw the technology had changed and uh, I had just bridged over and uh, did the Athenium Hotel. The Athenium Hotel was my first commission in the city of Detroit. It was a 30 foot by 15 foot diptych and uh, it was all done in oils. So I, while I was working at the sign company, I was um, uh, painting at the Athenium Hotel. And when the technology changed and uh, uh, people were laid off, I just had already bridged. And I said, you know what, I enjoy doing this. And plus it was an opportunity to do things in public places. And so my uh, pursuit of doing public art was intensified just by doing that one project. My inspiration comes from when, uh, doing the community forums when I do large pieces that are public pieces. Inspiration comes from the stories that they tell me. Some of those stories are historical stories and all. And I get really inspired to listen to those stories and to create those pieces of artwork. Just like a person who hears uh, a story and he turns it into a song and uh, it becomes uh, lyrics and the lyrics are beautiful and it paints a picture. So I paint the pictures of just creating the artwork using uh, the stories that come from the community. The one at CCS is a large tile mural. Uh, it's about 30 feet by 30 feet. The piece represents uh, the community. There's a, there's a woman that's holding a child and with a single thread, she creates this quilt and the quilt wraps around this entire community. So there is a lot of historical type of iconic things that uh, I just wanted to make sure I put inside the, the paintings. Floyd the Charles H. Wright Museum, uh, I won an international contest. 
Uh, I had just completed the Athenium Hotel. So I ended up um, designing a terrazzo floor. Uh, one of the things that intrigued me was the materials and the medium that, that went into it. The floor uh, depicts uh, the history and the culture of African American experience. On one side, it has an African American woman leaning over an African American youth has lost his life in uh, violence. And on the other side, it has an African woman leaning over an uh, African man or woman who lost his life in the Middle Passage. Uh, when they were brought over on, on the ships. The design is uh, based upon the empowerment of African Americans, and it's a celebration piece that celebrates African American experiences. Paradise Valley Park uh, really talks about the history and the culture of um, Detroit uh, back in the 20s or so, when a lot of entertainers came to Detroit. It was like Harlem. Um, uh, you had Cab Calloway, Diane Washington, and a lot of other entertainers that used to come here. And uh, this walkway is actually just to celebrate the people who used to come in and out of the city of Detroit back in the 20s or so, 20s or 30s. And um, the, the deep root culture in jazz and, and music and, and poetry. This right here is, there's three layers. It takes three layers of plastering for a fresco. And the reason why is because when you uh, paint on the surface, you don't want the surface to, to dry out real fast. So you have to have three layers. The frescoes that I've done around the city of Detroit are the ones at the Detroit Athletic Club. Um, those were the first frescoes done since 1932. There hasn't been anybody do any commission fresco paintings in Detroit since 1932 until I did those. But the second largest fresco that I've done to the Rivera is at the Flint Institute of Arts Museum. So it's uh, 17 feet by 88 feet long. And then the other fresco that I did was at the Richard DeVall Center. Uh, it's seven feet by five feet. This, this fresco, particular fresco, was my roofer and my roofer was doing the roof, and I said, man, that looks really sharp. He wears a derby when he does the roof. And uh, so I decided to do a picture of him. And uh, so I, I took a couple of pictures of him and all, and I said, well, I'm gonna do a portrait of him. And this is what I did. Sort of the origin of fresco, if you think of an ancient cave wall, okay, and you're talking about thousands of years ago, and you walk into this cave, and this cave is all filled with limestone, okay? And it's kind of damp a little bit. Then you decide to pick some dirt off the ground, which sort of is kind of reddish-like. So it's, it's dirt that's kind of oxidized and all. You mix it with a little water and you paint these animals and pictures up on the wall. That's a form of fresco. That's the earliest form of fresco. So there's a lot of math that goes into it. It's, it's breaking up space. That's one of the biggest things. How do you design something that's 20 feet by 120 feet or so? Where do you start at? Do you start in the middle? Do you start to the left? Do you start to the right? So you have to have an armature. You have to have a structure that's already built. Then you can put the outside, the layers on top of it. So for composition-wise, it's done the same way. This piece is, I, I use a, a, a system called uh, dynamic symmetry or golden ratio or golden means. They used to use that a long time ago. And what it does is that it allows me to break up space, create my compositions, and be accurate on where I want my images to be. It's probably one of the hardest mediums to work with. You gotta be extremely confident in your skill level. One thing that's nice about Fresco, it crosses many different disciplines. It, it's, it's design, it's the ability to paint, uh, it's the ability to do things logistically because on a fresco, there is no room for errors. So what you put down stays down. If there's a drip on the surface of a fresco, it absorbs into the wall, it stays there permanently unless you decide that you have to tear out all what you started for that day just to render that type of area. One of the main things I like to do is I just like to see the uh, revitalization of fresco paintings being done uh, right here in the city of Detroit because 
Uh, the frescoes that we have from Diego Rivera is the largest fresco in the United States. It's right here in the D. And I always tell people Detroit is 300 years old. It was the second largest city in America, you know, and there's a lot of history and a lot of culture here. And I just love to have the world just to see all the wonderful things that we have done here. You can learn more about Hubert Massey and all the other artists featured here today on DetroitPerforms.org.